Zoll Technology will guide you to meet the 2015 CPR guidelines. High quality resuscitation on the move is achievable and high perfusion CPR is within reach. When it comes to helping you deliver high quality CPR, no one offers you more than Zoll. I had a change of title in the last minute. All right. To start, nurses have always been at the bedside of dying patients. Our role in providing the highest quality of remaining life and support at the end of life for both patients and family members are traditional, accepted, and expected. By the way, my talk is going to be geared towards end of life versus the palliative care because Dr. Rocky and Dr. Noreen uh, have spoken quite a bit about it. Uh, this is mostly end of life care of patients in the emergency department. There are four nursing objectives at the end of life. First is assisting patients and their family through the death and dying uh, process. What does this mean? It means doing practical tasks and having the knowledge and skills to deliver active hands-on care, meeting the mental and emotional needs of the patients and family members, and providing comprehensive, coordinated, compassionate, and holistic care to patients and their family. It also means advocating for resources that support patients and families in choosing their preferred environment for a peaceful and dignified death. It could be in hospice care, it could be at home, or it could be in just in the ward. And provide a therapeutic communication such as responding to some profound questions about life and death, or to simply know when to say nothing because it's the most appropriate response. Secondly, as Dr. Noreen has uh, said, pain and symptoms management. The nurses are expected to attend and manage pain and other distressing symptoms, knowing what types of medication, uh, the dosing adjust uh, adjustment, of course, is different um, when it comes to end of life and palliative care. Culture, now, third is culturally sensitive practices. Each individual has, uh, has particular beliefs, value, and biases. Sometimes it can be difficult to care for some patients due to cultural differences, but we are called to be empathetic, to be sensitive, and respectful, respectful even in the presence of disparities. The fourth one is honoring the values, ethical decision making, meaning honoring the values and healthcare wishes of patients such as refusal of treatments and it is ethically and legally permissible. Pretty much your nurses are the best Robin in Batman, okay? Just remember whoever the nurse is here. This is what a dying patient looks like. Take about five seconds, okay? To read that, that's what a dying patient looks like in the emergency department, let's just say that. So they don't really look like they're a disaster most of the time. They could just be resting, but they're dying. They could just be uh, almost really, really bad looking. So it could be anything what they would look like. This is our to-do list. The nurses are expected to do this, the expected. But anyway, are we there? Are we there? No, we're not quite there. Slow and steady wins the race. I'll tell you what we're doing in our emergency department to achieve where we want to be. So the to-do list, we are supposed, we are to manage difficult and control symptoms, the pain and the non-pain. Pain, continue to treat pain as if it is an issue. Like I said, dose and route adjustments, grimacing, groaning, and moaning, it may not indicate pain, but almost always our emergency physicians err towards treating it as if it is pain. Other medications, nurses, talk to your physicians, talk to your family what they want, always ask them. There must be, there must be a co constant communication. Um, but it's in the mindset that it's going to be difficult because we just don't have the time. I have other, other, um, other patients to attend to. But make time because at the end of the day, what they have said, it's going to make a difference to your patients and to, and to the family members. Use clinical judgment for each individual patient and each of their medications. Now the death rattle. Uh, this is most likely towards the end, 
I would say in the last few hours or minutes, if that is. It is very bothersome to the observers. Nurses take time to explain. Um, from my experience, these are the times that the family members are so aggressive. What's going on? Is this the last time? Is, the, is, is it the patient dying? Is it going to be in the next few minutes or something? If you're not able to answer, call your physician. Have them uh, explain to the family members who are uh, inquiring. In our unit, um, we have selected um, a couple of medications that we use um, when it comes to death rattle. Um, the glycopyrrolate and then the buscopine. And maybe in your institution, it could be different. Some institutions use uh, the scopalamine patch. Um, one way you could also alleviate this problem is repositioning. How about the increasing weakness and fatigue? This is the decreased ability to move. Um, of course, you can reposition. And it's not really that hard to do. It's just a matter, sometimes it may not do anything. It may not uh, decrease or alleviate the symptoms, but being there means so much for these patients and family members, and that's what matters. Also, the question of having to starve these patients when you don't give any food, what are you going to say? Um, if you don't know anything, there's always your physician, of course. Um, having to explain that it is a natural course, that the body is slowing down, as simple as that. Simple conversations um, really, really helps. Um, don't ever think that, because sometimes when I, was, when I was a bit younger, when you don't give anything, you feel like you're doing something wrong. You're almost like you're contributing to their, to their death. But as you grow and as you find meaning to what you are doing, it really changes the perspective. At this point, parenteral fluids may be ha harmful. And what if they have NG feeding? Should you, should you not talk to your physicians? Most definitely mouth care. Still giving the nursing care is very important at this time. Oxygen. Some of my physicians that I, I work with in our emergency just maximize oxygenation to the point that you don't do NIV. I mean, they, they except for that, but they would have oxygen blowing in their faces. Does it really help? Most of the time at this point, most likely not. Um, communication, have a good talk. Um, more than anything, titrate oxygen to patient's comfort. Some may think that it may pro prolong the dying process. It really depends on what you believe. Um, most definitely what we do is continuing oxygen saturation monitor monitoring. Um, it is because it is distressing at this point. The alarm system would probably be beeping. So what we do is we just turn them off or just put them in, in silence. Um, air hunger. This is the last reflexes of breaths. Opiates can help, repositioning, and talking. Communication issues, I wanted to talk, to emphasize about this. Some of these patients are able to talk. They could be so confused, but sometimes it, they talk as if they make sense. They could be talking to a family member who has passed on, someone that they know, have that understanding uh, that it is a normal pathway to dying. Don't get freaked out or anything like that, or even, mm, are you gonna have hope? Have it, but be realistic also. Um, assume that your patient hears everything. You cannot be mumbling. You cannot be, uh, I don't know, talking down, especially if their family members are, are very upset. Uh, be kind to them. Withdrawal of non-beneficial treatments. Help the nurses help with terminal extubation or whatever it is that you are discontinuing. <coughs> And we also help with challenging dispositions requiring coordination, such as terminal discharge, hospice, palliative care, and so forth. We have revised, in our, in our department, we have revised this, unit, this form so many times, and I'd like to share it to everyone. This is the latest one. I've actually just seen it. Um, we, I think we started with three pages, and then we went down and Nobody really complies to, to take, to sign, to document. We went down to 
uh, two pages, and now we've come down to one page. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some compliance. Anyway, I just want to point out that we particularly uh, focus on psychosocial and spiritual care, the comfort measures, the symptoms assessment, and what else? The disposition is here. We are not, um, we don't really have a workflow that whatever we do continues to the ward if the patient gets admitted, but we're in the process of doing so. Hopefully it can spread out to the rest of the wards. What do I need to do next? So what are we doing? I've only got one minute. Um, with, with everybody's busy, this is just one of our initiative. What we're doing is um, the work group is doing one-on-one -on -one teaching if there is any available time. Uh, it's really an opportunistic one on the job learning. We gather everyone. If there is a patient, as much as we can, we, we uh, gather the nurses to, to discuss about the case. Um, make it a teaching session. And we also incorporate this in our emergency medicine nursing grand round. And two of the most important things that we're doing now is incorporation of our end of life and palliative care in the AENC. And um, lastly uh, is the LNEC course. We are continuously uh, sending our nurses uh, to learn about palliative care, which is very important in emergency medicine, I think. That's all I have for you.